Hey there, welcome back to The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 9833. In a perfect world, I think this would be a huge story. I think I think this is a huge story. I hope you find out uh, when you hear the details that you think it's pretty important, too. There's a lawsuit filed against Dallas ISD, and this is having to do with uh, not just the mask mandate, but the way some a couple of kids were treated during the whole COVID hysteria back in 2020 and 2021. Now, if you go back uh, three years or so, listen, the, the, the coronavirus pandemic it is not nearly as big of a problem. The, the coronavirus itself isn't nearly as big of a problem in hindsight as our reaction to it. And by our, I mean, government's reaction to it and about half of our neighbors who were just so eager to be swept up in the hysteria that all turned out to be false. So a lot of, so much of it turned out to be false. Let me say that. Let me not speak in hyperbole here because I want to be deliberate with my words. But by the time 2021 rolled around, there was enough evidence out there about how masks didn't work and mass mandates definitely didn't work, whether or not you still wanted to argue about masks. Uh, I, I can have a little bit of gray area because the Cochrane study doesn't come out. The Cochrane study is something that I will make reference to on quite a bit of shows and segments whenever we talk about COVID because the Cochrane study should have been like the death knell for all this mask garbage to begin with. Um, the when, when Cochrane did their review of what was it like 19 different studies from 130 countries covered and their meta study of mass studies came across with the conclusion that this whole mass thing didn't work. Uh, it didn't work. The masks themselves didn't work. The mandates sure as hell didn't work. And it, it was all just a waste of time. Well, now that we know the truth, we need to go back and look at what these people were doing in the name of mass, in the name of violating your freedom of movement, of assembly, to go to the grocery store, to go to a, your own church, to be in public, to go to a bar, to go to a concert. This was all wrong. It, it all turned out to be erroneous. Go check out the Cochrane study. There, there's no question on mask anymore. The masks themselves and the mandates, completely worthless. So everything that you did to kids, every mask mandate did to kids was just torturing kids. It didn't have any positive effect. You may have been thinking you were doing the right thing. You may have been thinking that, uh, well, to, you know, until the studies come out, we better be more safe than sorry. But in this story, it goes way past that. Okay, yeah, it's not fair to judge them and say, okay, everyone that was doing this to kids, you were just torturing them for nothing. That is the truth. But I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. This is beyond that. This is in 2021 where we didn't have the Cochrane study yet, but we did have enough evidence that uh, the mass mandates, scientifically speaking, didn't make sense to begin with. But now in the real world, now that we had a year of studying under our belts, of observation under our belts, Governor Abbott here in Texas finally released them. Now, he said there's no longer a statewide mass mandate. And uh, going forward, this could be decided on an individual county by county basis. And of course, in Dallas County, we chose to keep the mask on. In Dallas ISD, they chose to keep the mask on. Still, it's in their prerogative, and there's a little bit of a gray area that uh, I can still have some sympathy for them until you read about how they treated the students who didn't comply. Now, you know they have no malice to the actual students themselves, but this got political real quick. You know the students who come in without a mask are the children of parents who don't believe in masks. Now... When you are taught that the other side is Hitler and you're taught that the other side is evil and Nazis and they're going to kill grandma and they don't listen to science and they hate women and they hate minorities. They hate, hate, hate trans and everything else. And well, that explains why you would treat these kids in such a vindictive manner. It's because you were being a hateful little political snot with your mass mandate. You aren't applying these rules to just be safe, better be safe than sorry, or keep the kids safe. The, uh, in the lawsuit here, I don't know how many kids they did this to, but um, there were, I doubt these were the only two kids that had to endure some of this. Let me give you an example of what happened to them. So mask mandates lifted, and the kids continued to go to school without masks. Now, the rule says, the law says, that there are exceptions. If you have a health exception, 
You know, you get a note from a doctor. He is asthmat- asthmatic. He can't have a piece of cloth over his face. If you have a religious exception, whatever. But I don't know what the details are, but I know both of these cat- kids had an exception. Didn't matter. They got isolated from the rest of the class. They were made to sit in a plexi, an unventilated plexiglass box in the library is the way it's described. Now, I haven't seen what this looks like, but that's what they did every day for two months. They would go to school, go to the library, go sit in your plexiglass box. You're not going to be subjected to any instructions. I I think they just passed them their homework and their worksheets and uh, they had to try and figure it out for themselves. Well, after two straight months of what is the school equivalent of solitary confinement, both of these kids are failing all of their classes. The parents are beyond fed up. There's no instruction. And it's it just seems like, okay, when it's time to eat lunch, you don't get to ha- meet your friends. When it's time to go to class, you don't get to meet your friends. You're just staying in a solitary box all day. You're not getting any instructions. No one's doing anything for you. That's where the lawsuit comes from. Here... Is where I get very serious. Anybody who did this or something like this, somebody needs to go to jail. We need to start taking the Constitution a little more serious. And when you are starting to infringe with people's rights to assemble, when you're starting to uh, infringe with people's constitutional rights to go from point A to point B or to practice their religion as they see fit, I mean... Well, they can just get away with it. They can just violate your rights, the rights of millions of Americans. And afterwards, they're like, oh, well, they just boo-booed. It's no big deal. No, no. People need to go to jail. If they can go find everyone that loitered through Statuary Hall without knocking over the velvet ropes on January 6th, if, they, if we have room in the criminal justice system for them, we have rules in the criminal justice system for the people who violated the rights of 330 million Americans to worship as they fee- see fit, assemble, travel, yada, 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 with these mass mandates. This is beyond, well, I was just doing what I thought was right. No, you're picking on students for political purposes. This was a vendetta that you were taking out on children. Unacceptable. You should not be in charge of a school. You should not be in charge of anything having to do with, you shouldn't even be able to get a job at Chuck E. Cheese. You shouldn't, when you drive past Chuck E. Cheese, you shouldn't even be able to look at it. You know, when this was going on and all these tyrants are doing all these things, you were thinking, well, if they're wrong, they're really going to be held to account. This is the part where where we hold them to account. Lawsuit, nothing. We need to see some handcuffs. All these people who tortured children for up to two years over everything that turned out to be false. I need to see some charges. I'm not going to let this go. I'm not. I I just can't do it. 800-288-9227. 800-288-9227. Anyone who falsely or vindictively, arbitrarily, whatever adverb you want to put on it, enforced these laws, especially against children and violated their rights. We got to start sending these people to jail. No more Mr. Nice Guy. 800-288-9227. 800-288-9227. What do you think? This is The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP. Now on FM at 93.3. Hey there. Welcome back to The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP. Now on FM at 93.3. This is another story I got from the Texas Scorecard. TexasScorecard.com. Parents of two children in Dallas Independent School District are suing the district, claiming their children were targeted by the former superintendent's unlawful mass mandate. And this goes back to, to 2021. I think this doesn't go far enough. Yeah, you're suing him, but you got to think of, remember when they stopped you from assembling? Freedom of assembly is in the first amendment. If you violate somebody's rights, that is illegal. Like if I violate your property rights, like if I snuck into your house, I'm violating your property rights. I'm trespassing. That's illegal. If I steal your cell phone from your back pocket, I'm violating your property rights. I've stolen your property. I have violated your liberty. If I forbid you from going and assembling in public, it's the same sort of violation as your rights. Whoever did that, whoever, number one, is the backstop, you know, the buck stops here, whoever made that rule, that's illegal. That should get jail time. That should get punishment. That should get handcuffs, charges, trial, jury, gavel. Whoever enforced that, I know you're just doing your job, but just following orders doesn't work in the modern world. We already decided that at the Nuremberg trials, charges, jail, maybe not as bad as the guy who made the order, but you violated people's rights too. You should know better. There's no excuse like, well, I didn't know I was violating somebody's rights. Well, you've had 40 years to read the constitution. That's, that's going to be on you, bud. But anyone who said you couldn't go to church, 
Anybody who went and closed down a church, whoever gave the order, who the police captain who gave the order, the mayor or the county judge who put the rule in, in, in uh, place in the first place, y'all all get big charges. The cop that went and responded and actually shut down a church, he gets charges too. We can't let them get away with this. What's their incentive to not do it again? You want to not go through that again? You want to not go through two, almost three years of torture again over a complete lie? Well, do something. This is how you do it or else you're just lining up to be exploited again. 800-288-9227. Caddy in Dallas. You're on WBAP. What do you think, Caddy? Yeah, James, I agree with you 100%. I um, I feel like we have just kind of forgotten about COVID and all this stuff that we went through, and we just kind of moved on, and nobody really talks about it anymore. There's no apologies. There's no, there's no consequences to their wrongness. And I haven't forgotten about it, but... I feel like people just don't want to talk about it anymore. They've moved on. Because it's easy. Because we're lazy. Cause, and that's the reason why people went along with it in the first place. Because it's more easy. Instead of fighting the system, just put on a mask to go to the grocery store. Just put on a mask to go to work. Fine. Just get this stupid shot. Just whatever it takes. And people are inherently doing the path of least resistance in their own personal life. Not looking at the big picture. And if we keep acting like that, then we're going to be keep being treated as sheep. Because that's all we deserve. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yep. I'm an actual, I'm a federal employee and me and maybe four or five other people stood strong and we, we got emails after emails saying you've got until this date or there's going to be termination consequences. We didn't do it. That date came. There were so many people that I work with that they got it. They had to. They Bro, had to. I don't, I don't want to name names, but at my old uh, job, when all this was going down, I had my boss call me on several occasions literally yelling at me like why won't you just get the gd vaccine and i would tell him i can't pretend to not know for my entire life that a vaccine that hadn't been tested for at least three years was considered so dangerous by all these people that are telling you to get the vaccine by the way politicians the medical community academia the media everyone agreed that a vaccine or any medical intervention that hadn't been tested for at least three years is so dangerous it's literally illegal your entire life up until a month ago that's why I can't. I can't pretend to not know. I don't know how millions of people did pretend to not know. Oh, we could just take untested vaccines. That's no problem. I guess the whole FDA is just a farce now. I mean, it is, but y'all just discovered it. Is, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm with I'm you. I'm with you. People need I'm to go to jail. Uh, people stay strong. Everybody's listening. Stay strong. Bring it back up. Keep talking about it because it's not going to go away. Right. And just like James said, we got it. They're going to do something else. Just like this. I love it. Don't stand up. Thank you, Caddy. Thank yeah. You, sir. Uh, everyone that lost their job, every pilot, every nurse, every soldier that lost their job over these vaccines and these mandates and this mask rules, you're heroes. You deserved better. You deserve to get credit now. You deserve an apology from all the Karens out there who were so easily duped. All the people that were snitching and tattling on you. And when I walked into the grocery store and some guy went and told a security guard that I'm not wearing a mask. I'm like, I just got snitched on by a grown-ass man. Real quick, Lance, can you do this in one minute? You'll be my last call on The James Show on WBAP. What do you think, sir? Hey, James, I really wish you had time to have a good conversation with me on this. I was actually a sitting superintendent in a public school in North Texas at that time. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Lance, stop. Just stop right now. Get in contact with me outside of the show, and I I definitely want to talk to you. James at WBAP.com. Can you do that? If I had more time, I, I, I would keep it going. But I need I need to talk to a superintendent because I I've, I've been dying to talk to one. We were the only school district that did not comply, and I could I'm I'm a I'm very well versed in this topic. I'd love to have a conversation with you. All right, well then uh, in a couple of years we may have Lance from Weatherford for governor. As far as I'm concerned, thank you very much, James at WBAP. Thank you very much for hanging out today. This has been The James Show on News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3.